This is Valerie DeLeon, here to show you how to use 3D Slicer to collect landmark coordinate data from reconstructions of the adult mouse skull. In part one, we'll cover mid-sagittal landmarks, or you can jump ahead to part two, covering bilateral points in the face and vault, or part three, covering bilateral points in the endocranial and inferior views. I've already got my workspace set up here. See the links below for tutorials to get started with that. Nasale represents the most anterior rostral point on the dorsal nose. For all landmarks, I start by placing a landmark in the general area using the 3D viewer, and then I use the orthogonal views to move the landmark into the mid-sagittal plane. And I confirm that it's on the dorsal surface and at the most rostral end of the nasal bones. The same thing for the anterior nasal spine. I use the orthogonal views to confirm that it's in the mid-sagittal plane and at the most rostral point on this process. For interdentale superior, we want to make sure the landmark is right on the suture, usually equidistant from the two incisors. Here I have too much bone cut away in my region of interest for the crop tool in the volume render module. After fixing that, I use the sagittal view to confirm the point is at the maximum of curvature between the rostral margin and the ventral margin of the bone contour. The next three landmarks are on the palate. The first is the suture between the premaxilla and the maxilla. In the midline, it's found at this expanded part of the bone between the incisive foramina, which are huge in the mouse. This is the junction of four bones. It's the right and left premaxilla and the right and left maxilla. Use the orthogonal views to confirm that the landmark is placed in the mid-sagittal plane. And in the sagittal view, you can see the interdigitated suture. If the right and left sutures are hitting the mid-palatal suture in an asymmetric way, choose the point that represents an average. The midline point on the maxilla palatine suture is usually here between the palatine foramina. There's often asymmetry at this point as well, so scroll through the transfer slices to find the suture and place the point at the average of the right and left sides along the mid-palatal suture. The third point on the midline palate is the posterior nasal spine. Use your orthogonal views to confirm that it's placed on the mid-palatal suture and use the sagittal view to confirm that it's placed on the most posterior or caudal point. If the spine is bifurcated, you'll need to project it to the midline using the orthogonal slices. Moving to the dorsal surface, place nasion at the most rostral point on the frontal bone between the nasal bones and checking orthogonal views to be sure that the landmark is not falling into the suture. I usually place Bregma roughly on the 3D view and then zoom in on the orthogonal views to adjust the placement. I'm trying to capture the junction of the coronal suture with the mid-sagittal plane, and the interdigitation of bones can make this challenging sometimes, so you may need to project the landmark. Also confirm in the orthogonal views that the landmark's on the dorsal surface and hasn't fallen into the suture. And I use the same approach for lambda, confirming placement in the orthogonal views and making sure the landmark hasn't fallen into the suture. The inner parietal point is on the mid-sagittal plane between the inner parietal and occipital bones. Now you can use the shape of the nuchal lines to identify the midline, and again use the orthogonal views to confirm that the landmark hasn't fallen into the suture. Opistheon captures the posterior dorsal margin of the foramen magnum with an expectation that it will be in the mid-sagittal plane. You can use this radiolucent gap in the transverse view to estimate the position of the landmark. I also use the nuchal lines to help me find the midline. Check in the sagittal view to confirm that the landmark is right on the margin. The next few landmarks are on the mid-sagittal plane in the endocranial space. We use the crop tool to get into this space.
Here's a tip. When you want to rotate the model in the window, make little circles in the opposite direction. The first landmark is posterior crystagalli. It looks different than we see in humans, but it still represents the attachment of the dura mater. Here we're looking for the midline point at the junction of the ethmoid and the frontal. Use your orthogonal views to adjust the placement as needed. The next landmark is the sphenoethmoidal junction in the midline. The point is just rostral to the optic canals. Here again, use your orthogonal views to confirm placement in the midline, and the sagittal view in particular, to be sure the point is at the junction between the sphenoid and ethmoid. The intrasphenoidal synchondrosis is at the junction of the presphenoid and the basisphenoid on the endocranial surface. Find the expanded area in the cranial base posterior to the optic canals. The synchondrosis is usually just rostral to that. Scroll through the orthogonal views to find the line of the synchondrosis. It's usually visible as a line of radiolucent or dark voxels. Use a similar approach for the basiocipital synchondrosis. It's usually in the same plane as the anterior points on the petrous temporals. You can scroll through the orthogonal views to find and confirm the position. Rotate the model to be sure that both the intrasphenoidal and the basiocipital synchondroses are in the midline relative to the overall structure of the cranial base. and posteriorly, we'll find basion. Again, use the radiolucent gap in the coronal view here to identify the most anterior point of foramen magnum, and place the landmark on the rim in the midline. Using the sagittal view to confirm that the landmark is placed right on the edge. Click the link to continue to part two with bilateral landmarks on the face and vault. Thank you for watching and thank you to the whole 3D Slicer team for this wonderful resource. Please subscribe to the Deleon Lab YouTube channel for more workflow tutorials and 3D reconstruction videos.